Well, if you think about it, singing is about as close as we have as humans to have a, a superpower. Because without doing anything extraneous, extraneous, they just open their mouth and people just give them money and take their clothes off for them. A really great right. singer. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have that talent. Gosh, damn. Right, like Tom Jones? Like any great singer, it's just the sexiest thing on the planet. And they often unfairly get all the attention. But a, I can tell you, a great front man is very hard to find. Even if oh, you're yeah. a great singer, that doesn't mean you're a great performer and know how to work a crowd and keep the band in line. I mean, it's, it's, it's a rare gift. So when you get a Scott Weiland or a Mick Jagger or a Freddie Mercury, they just stand so far above the crowd because that's a rare oh, talent. Yeah. That's, I mean, the way that, like, the way Freddie Mercury did uh, Wimbledon. That, that day. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, such a just... rare talent. And I, I, know, I know truly great musicians, and a lot of them, but I, I know very few truly great vocalists. And the ones that are, they deserve everything they get. They, they are magic. They're magic. And, and so, yeah, I love the music. But if the vocals aren't on point, it really makes me sad. Right. I mean, you can have a good beat going, and then all of a sudden uh, the vocals kick in, and it's just like it, it can take you out. Yeah, and it's an elusive thing, too, because I love Neil Young, and I love old Bob Dylan, and so it's not always about great vocal chops. In fact, some of the great singers I don't care for because it sounds too manufactured. You know, so it's a, at the end of the day, I guess it's more about storytelling and, like I said earlier, performance and being able to draw the crowd in. You a Giants fan in Texas? Yeah. It's, oh, I bet you're real popular. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Well, I was especially oh, the day the Cowboys Stadium was built, <laughs> uh -huh. I was at a watch party in, in some bar wearing my Lawrence Taylor jersey. Oh, shit. <laughs> and the cop that was watching over the bar comes up to me and he's like, hey, nice jersey. No I got shit. your back tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, oh, it's going to be fun. We have a ton of Cowboy fans here in uh, Memphis, man. So, man, they're I mean, everywhere. I'm, I'm not really a big NFL guy, man. I kind of jumped on the Titans bandwagon last year because they were just – like when the playoffs started, they started stroking <laughs> people. So, and Derrick Henry, I mean, is just a monster. So, yeah, I'm I'm more of a baseball fan, and people are like, "Why baseball? It's so slow." I don't. It's I guess it's because I grew up playing it, and I just fell in love with the game. Right, right, yeah. I I played it when I was younger, and uh, you know, because the way I look at it is, I liked it when I was younger. But that was like the golden – to me, that was like the golden age of baseball. You had like Nolan Ryan and oh my Frank God. Thomas, Ken Griffey Jr., uh, you know, just the names. Right. They had the names. Now I don't know any of these dudes, man. Yeah, it took me a while when I first got back into it to start re recognizing all the names. I was like, dude, I don't know anybody anymore. I can't even look at the Rangers and be like, okay, who's that? I mean, even to, to this day, there's a lot of people on the team that I don't even know. Right. Since 2011, I've kind of lost touch with the sport again. We were in a, originally started off as a group called Doomsday Riders. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then we stuck with that until, you know, the actual real Doomsday Productions, uh, you know, their lawyer hit him up with a, you know, cease and desist note, and so he changed the name. <laughs> I don't know what we are thinking. We are just kids, you know? We are just kids. Right. But, hey, at least you are making some kind of noise to at least get that. Yeah, we were new adults, and um, when we first met, you know, uh, my friend Alan Thomas introduced me to Bloodshot, and Troy Bloodshot, uh -huh. but uh, Alan Thomas, whose stage name was Junior E at the time, we formed a little group of three, uh, and uh, Alan was a friend of my brother's that I actually didn't like at the time, because my brother was in really rebellious, I was in like a hardcore Christian phase, and I was a band geek in high school, and so... <laughs> So I didn't like my brother and his fucking devil worshiping friends smoking meth in our fucking garage. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that because I was going to ask you about your family Listen too. To Kurt Cobain and yeah. 
<laughs> well, I'm talking about way back, back when I was a fucking like straight edge. And, uh, you know, he introduced me to Alan and uh, me and Alan, like, Alan stopped doing that shit and we started, but he like still liked to drink and we started drinking a lot together and we started freestyling. I right. lost, um, and um, I remember seeing you know, a couple of my friends we were hanging out with, they were freestyling and I remember listening to them like, hey, I could do that. I wonder if I could do that, you know, and just, uh, yeah. We ran, you know, and then eventually he introduced me to Bloodshot. So how many of your people are actually on the site now working for it, working on it? Um, so primarily, uh, as far as the day-to-day, the day -day, uh, it's me. And there's a guy that, that I, I uh, asked to be to, to write for us a few months ago. His name's Callie, Callie Green. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we have uh, Chad Carson, who's done some fantastic work for us uh, over the years. Um, Roscoe and Punk Rock Juggalo are, they, they're somewhat still involved, but, um, I mean, really, uh, most of the day-to-day -day is, is still me 20 years later, so. <laughs> That's, I mean, God, how did it even psychopathy get involved? Like, when you started getting, like, really in touch with psychopathic and kind of, like, on the inside of them? The okay, so the first the first big jump in traffic that we got was uh, in two thousand one. I want to say two thousand one, the original Lotus came out. Uh, yeah, because two thousand two, the ABK Lotus came out. So in two thousand one, uh, it was a Toledo gathering. Um, Toledo is not too terribly far from where uh, from, from where uh, Thago Lover, or, uh, who's you know Ricky, who I mentioned earlier, he's, right. he's the, the guy that originally started the site. So we actually went and visited him to uh, uh, at his house. Now, he was like 15 at the time, and I, I was 20. So, uh, so, so a whole crew of Juggalos went from Toledo to you know wherever he lives in Michigan, pretty you know, suburb of Detroit, and um, we had the, the CD with us. So he said, "Oh, let me check it out." Well, while he was listening to it, he was actually ripping it. And this little jogger memory, um, he ripped it to real to real audio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. So we, for all intents and purposes, we we uh, we ripped it and put it online to to stream uh, on the front page of our website. <laughs>